Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. There were only two roads. That's one of the most important things to know about Myrtle Beach. You have Business 17 and Highway 17 Bypass. Now, in recent years, they've added a couple of more, and of course, there are some other smaller roads along the 30 miles of the Grand Strand. But the truth is still that if you want to go anywhere down there, you're going to be on one of those two roads and maybe both. The eight years I lived there, as I traveled those roads, I saw a lot of strange things. I remember that it was just about lunchtime because I was hurrying south toward Polly's Island to deliver some papers to someone before he left for lunch. I was traveling down 17 Bypass and I made my way around a gentle sweeping curve in the road and over to the left to the far side of the highway I saw a young man kneeling in the grass. He looked to be in his 20s somewhere and I guess it struck me as odd because there wasn't a parked or broken down car anywhere in sight. Where did this guy come from? How did he get here? The questions tumbled over themselves in my mind. And then, what is he doing? because when I looked I saw indeed that he was kneeling in the grass his arms raised up over his head and then he would sort of collapse bow down and then rise up again and his face was full of intense emotion my brain began to race faster than the shall not be mentioned speed I was driving is he hurt was he hit by a car was someone else I couldn't see over there in the weeds hurt or in trouble? Does this guy need my help? I took my foot off the accelerator and began to slow down to go back and check when I saw a car already turning around to offer him assistance. So I headed on my way. But I continued to stare into my rearview mirror at this odd sight, wondering what was going on. And then suddenly, I knew. Suddenly I could see. As I stared at him in the mirror, I also saw beyond him. He was kneeling in the grass at the very point where 17 Business and 17 Bypass divide. There in the grass, he was praying intensely about which fork in the road God wanted him to take. Now, there have been many times when I have counseled people to pray about major decisions. I think it's a good thing to pray about forks in the roads of our lives. I don't recall, however, ever advising anyone to pray about which fork to take on Highway 17, or any other highway for that matter. But this young man believed that God had a plan for his life, and he wanted to do his best to perceive and follow it. This week we're exploring things we may have always wondered, questions of faith that we ask, and today our question is, does God have a plan for my life? Well, the answer is yes, but that yes may not mean what you think it means. Some people think that God having a plan for their lives is like that young man kneeling in the grass. They believe that God has directed every moment and every action of our lives. In other words, it somehow fulfills God's purpose for us to have to pay for a car repair in March rather than April. There's important meaning for us if the gallon of milk we bought is the one that goes sour two days before the expiration date. God set it in place that we would fall down the steps and break our leg. Who we marry, the work we do, each and every little thing these people believe is part of God's grand design. Like a movie director, they say, God sits in heaven setting everything up just right before yelling, action. If that's what you mean when you ask, does God have a plan for my life, my answer is no. God gives us the gift of free will and we make choices in life. Then God, like a master craftsman, takes our choices, good and bad, and weaves them into the beautiful design of his purpose. 
What I'm saying is that God does have a plan for us, but God's plan is larger than the small everyday choices we make. God's plan for us is salvation. That's what God has in mind. In love, in mercy, God plans to save us and to claim us as God's own. And the other part of God's plan for us is that day by day we become more like Jesus. God's plan is that we live our lives like Jesus did, caring for others, reaching out to those in need, receiving God's grace and living God's grace for others in a relationship of love and trust with God always. Love and mercy and serving and praise and joy and peace and turning to God in all things, those should be the things that guide our day-to-day -day choices. That's how our lives should be shaped. So now, we are back to the question. Does God have a plan for my life? Yes. God's plan for us is salvation. God's plan is for us to be like Jesus. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.